a couple of questions I saw that I wanted to answer because I saw this was posted on the core. And I was like, hey, these are some good questions that I feel really may benefit a number of people who may have some of the same questions out there. And let's go ahead and again get started with these questions. So the first question I'm going to go, what old phones are still worth purchasing? So when I saw this, you know, I know a lot of people out there, you know, they're not about jumping on the latest and greatest when it comes to smartphones. They're trying to save money for whatever reason. And maybe because, one, they're just in a budget, or two, they're just not trying to jump on the latest trends. And it makes sense. So for me, to really answer that question, uh, say that you got to look at a manufacturer that has a, a reputation of updating their phones. And the reason why updates are important is because when it comes to now, when we got all these spywares and all these viruses now popping up on phones, you want a manufacturer that are constantly keeping up the security updates especially with their flagship phones. You know, there are a number of your major and larger manufacturers that have a really bad reputation when it comes to upgrades. And Samsung was one of them for a long period of time. Uh, I know they're getting better with it now. But for me, the first choice, I would say, is a Google Pixel, and particularly the Google Pixel 2 XL. And the reason why I choose that phone, because I really feel like, you know, the Pixel 2 XL is actually a better phone than the Pixel 3 XL. And the reason why I say that, when you look at the internals, the hardware is pretty much identical. You know, maybe an updated processor, but that update don't really feel like you're really getting that big of a step forward. Especially when you look at the Pixel 3 XL having memory management issues and, you know, having battery issues that people are complaining about. Yet, people on the Pixel 2 XL are still feeling like they have a great phone, and they do. You know, they're not still having the same issue that people are complaining about. And when you look at what you can get a Pixel 2 XL for right now, you can snag one for almost under 300 bucks. If you're going to get a phone that's going to get upgraded, it's going to have a lot of the same features that's going to come up with some of your newer Pixels. Because e either you're going to get it a couple of months later or, you know, or through Google just updating it later onto the older phones or you can go ahead and silo it. And that's what a lot of people do anyway. When it comes to the older Pixels, they just go ahead and uh, rip it from the Pixel 4 XL and put it on their older phones, and it works just fine. So if you're someone who's not one to jump on the latest and greatest, I would say the Pixel 2 XL will be my first choice. My second choice, OnePlus 6T. You know, OnePlus have surprised me over the years. You know, they were once the company that was known for, you know, trying to be the company that can, uh, challenge the big boys, but just leaving so much or too much of the hardware in out of the picture. And yet over the past couple of years, you know, they have really stepped up to the plate and really brought about a phone that is on par, if not better than a lot of your manufacturers are out there, you know, really giving companies like Samsung a run for their money, you know, because they're able to bring hardware to this very similar on par with a lot of your Samsung phones out there for half the price. And because of that, that's why I really say that this is a good choice. When you look at the main or the options here on Swapper, you look, it's under 400 bucks for these phones or for the options here. And you're getting a phone with eight gigabytes of RAM and 120 gigabytes of internal storage. And when you compare that to the Pixel 4 that's about to come out, where the Pixel 4 have six gigabytes of ram and 120 gigabytes of storage this phone will actually have better specs as far as on that level than your pixel 4. the screen is still a pretty nice screen you know with that even with that little teardrop notch as they call it it don't take away from the screen you know when i had the phone i loved the phone and one of my biggest regrets is that i decided to get rid of the pixel or the, I'm sorry, the OnePlus 6T to keep my keep my Pixel 3 XL. The OnePlus 6T is a beast of the phone. I love that phone. The only complaint I may have with it may or was with the um, in glass fingerprint sensor. As much as I was someone who was raving about it when it first came out, I thought it was a cool feature. But when it comes to speed of unlocking your phone, it's still kind of iffy here and there. But you were able to get around it because the uh, face unlock is just so fast. And if you're someone looking for a nice phone to market, you know, this is going to be a good phone. And OnePlus have been doing a good job updating their phone. In fact, the OnePlus 6T should be getting upgraded to Android 
10 real soon. So, hey, if you're on a market looking for a cheaper phone, snag this. And this is going to be half the price of what you're going to pay for the Pixel 4. The last phone, yeah, this is going to be outside of Android. Pretty much, I would to say any older iPhone. I feel like Apple really do a good job keeping their phones up to date. And uh, they really pack their phones with solid internal hardware. Uh, they always offer pretty much support for their phones or anything that you buy from them. And as long as it, the phone is not like a refurb from some third-party manufacturer, if it wasn't open or anything like that, Apple will have your back. And, yeah, you're getting a good phone. And Apple, when it comes to iPhones, have always uh, had a good resale value, and there's a reason for it. You know, when you get an old iPhone, uh, it doesn't matter what phone it is. If it can be updated to the latest software, it will be. And for the most part, you know, uh, especially if something like a, if you were to pick up an iPhone uh, 8 Plus or maybe maybe an iPhone 7 Plus, you know, you're still going to get a pretty decent phone that's going to be on par with what you got out there. And for people out there that prefer the fingerprint sensor, you know, this is going to be ideal. And I don't think you're going to lose going with an iPhone. So for my next question that popped up, would you upgrade from a Pixel 3 XL to the Pixel 4 or Pixel 4 XL? Now, this question is dear to my heart because that's basically what I'm about to do. I am upgrading from the Pixel 3 XL to the Pixel 4 XL or the Pixel 4, depending on um, the actual price when it come out there. But the reason why I'm making that choice is because my Pixel 3 XL, you know, I just said it the last um, a few minutes ago. One of my biggest regrets is that I gave up my OnePlus 6T so that to, so I can keep the Pixel 3 XL. You know, since having the Pixel 3 XL, um, I knew it was a bad choice when I bought it. But, you know, I got caught up in the hype. You know, uh, Google put out there, this is the latest and greatest. I'm a, you know, Pixel fanboy, and I jumped on it. And, you know, as much as I complained about the Pixel 2 XL because of the screen, really, that phone overall was a really good phone except for what like i say the display and even with the display i was able to get over it overall you know the only time i really noticed it was when i compared it to something else or to another phone but for everything else for everyday use i enjoy using the phone um and i regret that i spent the money to sell or spent the money for the pixel 3 xl when i could have kept the pixel 2 xl saved some money and waited for the pixel 4 you know with all the issues that i had with like i said memory issues um having battery issues you know, even with the updates, I still haven't fixed any of that for me. And I'm hoping the Pixel 4, you know, um, resolve all that. And really, you know, I don't know what Google was thinking when they decided to um, forsake adding more hardware to their phones. You know, well, I could probably guess what they were thinking. They were trying to find a way to save money, you know, instead of spending extra money to pack the phone with the hardware that it needed. They felt they can get around it with software and still keep the hardware where it's at and get it over. And the problem is that's not happening. And when you got companies like OnePlus out there that's able to do the same thing as far as providing a, a phone that is stock Android, that's putting out solid updates, and that's really putting a phone that when you look at the way it responds, the way that the phone just flow, you feel like that really when you put these phones next to each other, there's a clear difference, and the winner right now has been OnePlus. Yes, I know Google have been putting out some uh, software that has been forward-thinking, such as NightSight, something that now we're starting to see Apple trying to respond with. You're seeing that they have this call screen app, which no other manufacturer is doing that yet, and then they're coming up with some more. So, yes, I know they have some software that is really cool, that is really pushing what we're going as far as phone innovation, and for me, I think that may be the only thing that is keeping me personally sticking with Google Phone because of that software integration. But it, it is really getting harder and harder for me to recommend a Pixel phones to people because I know that, you know, when it, you look at the internals and you see that compared to what other manufacturers are doing out there, it's like eternals do matter, especially when you look at what people are doing with their phones now. You know, we're doing more than just using our phone to uh, text and make calls. A lot of people are doing everything with it. We're streaming. We're playing games. We're, you know, we're doing multiple things on our phone. We're constantly multitasking. And we want our phones to be able to keep up with that. And we're starting to see that, you know, phones that are packed with not enough internals 
are starting to feel sluggish. And that's basically what's happened with the Pixel 3 XL. Because of that, I am upgrading to the Pixel 4, Pixel 4 XL. My last question. Say, uh, what was it, 2012? And really, Apple started it first. And basically, they were going after some of these manufacturers like HTC, uh, particularly Samsung, claiming that, you know, they basically infringed on their hardware. And some of them made sense. You know, um, you look at the first Samsung Galaxy that came out there. I even came out and said that, look, this thing actually looked like a, a knockoff iPhone. But after that, you know, Samsung distinguished himself from Apple. Yet, basically, once Apple got beyond the Steve Jobs era, they went to an era of just trying to go after companies left and right for just the littlest thing. Basically claiming that the way a phone is designed with the, the little shape that it is, the, the rounded edges that was a uh, fringe on their patents and basically these companies like look we got to protect ourselves from apple and that's why you saw google actually bought motorola they bought motorola not so they can actually do anything with motorola but so they can get the patents that motorola had and use it as a way to defend itself against apple so now as a result of that anytime you look at a new phone come out there or a new idea a company is following the patent because they don't want apple to pick it up later and then decide to say that uh, this company infringed on the patent and the irony of all of this, when Apple is claiming that this company is, you know, infringing on their on their ideas or on their uh, technology, is that a lot of the things that Apple do, they copy from someone else. They don't really come up with a lot of their own ideas. You know, if you look at the iPhones now, you know, uh, notification bars that came from Android. And this actually a lot of things they have came from another phone manufacturer or another idea that was already done. They just took it, put it into their ecosystem, and made it where it works with their phone. So for them to come out later and say that, you know, these companies are infringing on them, it's like, come on, bro. You know, you actually take other companies' ideas for years and integrate into your stuff, but now you want to claim patent suits. So that is why these companies are going out there, and they are trying to defend themselves against companies that, like Apple, that have basically said that, these companies have infringed on their technology. So the last thing I want to do, I wanted to find a way to uh, shout out a, a video I saw. Okay, for today's channel shout out, actually it's going to be today's video shout out. I'm going to shout out Game Domain with Elder Scrolls Online. And I will link his video below. And what I actually liked about this video is this. I am not a gamer at all. And... The way he described this video or described this game in this video, showing the, the different screen or uh, shots here, it actually made me interested. And he did a good job uh, bringing that forward. So I don't know what I want to do going forward is to try to shout out different uh, YouTubers and uh, especially the smaller channels. Uh, that one. With him having 26.9 thousand subscribers you're not quite as small as some of the other new tubers out there but this video actually uh really got me interested into checking out this game even though i'm not much of a gamer so that is my video shout out and that's it for today's podcast it's pc747